Hi, I'm Colin Chapman. I'm a technical sales representative with Clocksman. Today we're going to talk a little bit about our pipe support system. Um, it's also a pre-cured composite structure, much like the traditional clock spring reinforcement system. Um, instead of focusing on hoop reinforcement, clock spring pipe supports are specifically designed to mitigate and prevent crevice corrosion at support, hangar, or other contact locations in your facility. Um, the unidirectional design of the bottom two layers does a good job of amply preventing capillary movement of water in underneath the composite, and our outer layer is a bi-directional uh, fiberglass structure. This is designed more to be a sacrificial wear plate at those locations so that if the line were to move laterally, it doesn't have the opportunity to kind of pull the glass apart. Um, this is also paired with our method of thacrylate adhesive system like a clock spring repair. This is a very important aspect to this as well because this is what bonds the whole thing together and really prevents the ingress of water and other materials. Um, our kits are also going to include our high modulus filler material, which you, you might recognize from the Proxman kits as well. Um, this will only need to be utilized if you're already dealing with crevice uh, corrosion at these locations. Um, if you were to run your r string or your V31 test and the calculation came back saying you don't need to repair it, um, pipe supports become a viable option because they're not a reinforcement, it's a preventative measure for the future. Um, but you, you still may want to utilize our filler material in the current criteria you have. Um, so today I'm going to show you basically how to install this. It's a fairly simple, quick application. It shouldn't take more than 10 to 20 minutes depending on how, your level of experience. Um, first I'll kind of show you. Today we're dealing with our split sleeve design. Um, this is three individual split sleeve layers. Like I said, the bottom two are unidirectional glass. The top one is bidirectional. Um, if you zoom in here, you can actually see pretty clearly this is straight out of the box. I haven't moved anything. The inside layer or the layer that's going to go on your line is clearly labeled and should be the innermost layer in the pipe support to start. The middle layer is labeled with a two in the corner here. It might be tough to see. And then the, the bi-directional layer, which is clearly different than the other two, is also going to say outside. So it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, if you run your B31 or R strength calculation and it kicks back saying that you do need to repair something, um, we're always going to recommend either our snap wrap or traditional clock spring products depending on what type of pressure you're running through the line. Um, that's kind of that's going to pretty much rule out the pipe support because again, it's not designed for reinforcement; it's designed for protection. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about pipe support installations. Uh, you'll have your can of adhesive, which is pre-portioned depending on the OD of the line and coils you'll be using. Uh, the blue activator corresponds with the adhesive that comes in 80 gram packets. To determine how much activator to put in, you want to refer to the temperature chart on the side of the can. You'll need to know your ambient and pipe temperatures going off of whichever is more extreme. It's also going to give you a working time. If you decide that you want to use filler because you already have corrosion at that location, there's also a temperature chart on the front of the filler bag, which will correspond to the red activator packet which is portioned in 20 gram quantities. Then you have your accessory kit, which includes everything needed for the installation with the exception of acetone rags and a drill. So the proper mixing procedure for the adhesive, we, go, we call it 30, 60, 90. Um, the 30 would be you pop the lid off the can and you mix it by itself, no activator, for 30 seconds. So after 30 seconds, um, and after you've referred to the temperature chart, you're gonna add the proper amount of activator after you get that amount in, then you're going to mix the can for an additional 60 seconds. Remember, 30, 60, 90, 30 by itself, 60 with the activator. After 60 seconds, you take the long black spatula, scrape the white material off the edges, get it all back in the mix. We're going to mix for a final additional 90 seconds or until the consistency is one blue color with absolutely no streaking. This will ensure a good cure. So then you, you mix for your additional 90 seconds. And after you do that, you can pour the finished product into your paint tray. On the pipe prep required for this, we look for an ACE 3 finish with an anchor pattern. You're also going to want to solvent wipe the line with acetone and rags to make sure that there's no other soft materials on there. Um, after you've done that, you've mixed your adhesive, you're ready to install. The first thing you need to do is you need to apply a liberal coating of adhesive to the line itself, 360 degrees. Um, this should be your thickest coating of adhesive um, because it's the most important mechanical bond.
After you get the adhesive on the line 360 degrees, you're ready to start with the, the layer marked inside. That's the one that goes directly on the line. See the simplicity of the split sleeve application. Need very little clearance. Just slide it over in place. Try not to scrape the adhesive you've already put on there. After you get the first layer secured, you go back to your tray of adhesive. You're going to apply more to this layer, 360 degrees again. Um, this coating doesn't have to necessarily be as thick as the on the line itself, um, but still make sure you're covering the whole the entirety of the coil. Then, as you'll see, when we go to apply the, the next layer, which again is going to be labeled with the number two in the corner. Um, you're going to not want to line up the openings of the split sleeves. So the general rule is we try to achieve at least 90 degrees of distance between uh, openings. So here's you'll see I'll, I'll put this on, slide it over, and then I'll rotate it so that we don't line those up. Um, again, notice how little clearance is required for this. So we've got the second layer on. Looks good. Now I'm going to put some more adhesive on this layer. This will be the last layer that takes adhesive because we only have one more layer to go. And that's going to be our bi-directional layer, which goes on top and is designed more as that sacrificial wear plate. And again, as I apply this layer, you'll notice I rotate it back the other direction, again, trying to get at least 90 degrees of distance between the openings. After you get all three layers on, there will be uh, five hose clamps in your accessory kit. You're going to distribute those evenly throughout the coil. Um, just use your hand to, to get them as tight as you can first. Um, then there is a, a driver that will help you to tighten them down later manually. Um, the basic rule here is you, you don't want to tighten any one hose clamp down all the way. You kind of want to gradually tighten them all, go, going back and forth. Because if you were to tighten one by itself all the way, um, that may cause the repair to, to not line up evenly, which, which you would notice, but to avoid that, just, just make sure you're not tightening one down all at once. Just kind of go back and forth between them. Um, the end result, I mean, all five hose clamps should be very tight by the end, but again, I'll go back usually three or four times and tighten them gradually. Um, this is the last step in the installation process. After you get these hose clamps fully tight, um, you're going to want to allow the adhesive to cure for a full two hours. Um, you're also all right to clean up the edges of the coil if there's excess extruding out the side. Um, so after you get these tightened down fully, you want to allow for a full two hour cure time after which you can come back and remove these hose clamps and if like in this case we lifted our line if you lifted your line you can place it back down um, if it's new fabrication you're good to install the pipe as as you feel necessary Now I've gone back three or four times. They're all nice and tight. And after two hours of curing, this is what the finished product looks like after you remove those hose clamps. And it's set right back on that support location.